Welcome back to DBL. We are taking a look into some of the most infamous cults and hearing from the people who escaped. Leslie Wagner Wilson found her way out of the People's Temple. She fled right before the Jonestown massacre and became free from the following. But first, we need to warn you that some of the images you're about to see are extremely graphic. It's been more than 40 years since cult leader Jim Jones led his followers to commit mass suicide and murder. And Leslie Wagner Wilson is one of 11 followers who escaped from the People's Temple right before the infamous Jonestown Massacre. At 18 years old, Leslie was a wife and a mother. That's when cult leader Jim Jones began summoning his followers to leave San Francisco and move to South America where he built a compound in Guyana to create an idealistic commune. 918 people died in the 1978 Jonestown Massacre. Prior to the 9-11 terrorist attacks, this tragedy was responsible for the greatest number of American deaths because of a single act with the intent to kill. The compound that day, again, there was a little bit of panic. You could see it, especially in the leadership. Those in leadership, you could, you knew something was wrong. Jim did not want Congressman Ryan to be in Jonestown. He did not want the visitors. He doesn't want anyone leaving because he is frightful that everything will be exposed. When we left, we were just prepared to die because we knew that if we got caught, then our punishment would be severe. This tragedy is responsible for the phrase, drinking the Kool-Aid something people say casually. But for Leslie, it triggers memories of escaping with her son and the day she lost the rest of her entire family. Leslie Wagner Wilson, thank you so much for joining us here on DBL. Okay, so as a child, what led your family and many others to join the People's Temple? We have so many questions. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, and the reason why we joined People's Temple was because my sister, Michelle, um, had gotten involved in, in heavy, hard drugs. One of her friends told her about People's Temple and that they had this incredible youth drug program. And so that's how we initially started traveling from Santa Rosa to Ukiah to the, to the, to the services. I appreciate you rooting this with us because you were a young mother when your family was instructed to move to Jonestown and first your husband and son relocated to the compound in Guyana and then you followed. So why did Jim Jones leave the country to build his perfect utopian society? Well, originally the Jonestown was supposed to be just a place where you could go, you could travel, then work, and then come back to the United States. Um, once the, there was a group of people that left People's Temple, they were members, they went to New West Magazine, and they started actually telling really what was happening behind closed doors, the beatings, the signing blank confessions. Um, and so they exposed People's Temple to a point where Jim was, Jim just could not, you know, withstand the, the, the heat and possible criminal actions that would follow. So Leslie, mm -hmm. can you describe further what life was like on the compound and did it ever change over time while you were there? The community was beautiful. People loved each other. Uh, we were working long hours you know, six days a week from, you know, 6 a.m. to sundown. On Sundays, we had this great dinner, uh, music, entertainment. So in the beginning, it was very, it was nice because there wasn't an onslaught of people that came. Once the exodus started, there was not enough space. Um, the conditions changed. You know, women and men had to use the outhouse together. The gym became more paranoid. So. In months, the community started changing and the light started turning to darkness. So when did you realize something wasn't right? What were some of the red flags in the beginning? The first red flag was Jim, um, we were on a, at a Sunday service in River Valley. We were mulling around the, the outside after, after the service was over, waiting for the next service to start. And we heard gunshots and people hit the ground. And then people were saying, Jim, you know, father's shot father's been shot and so we went into the went back into the building and then all of a sudden jim comes out and people are just in a frantic but in front of him is this blood-soaked shirt that he had they had placed in a frame 
And he goes to the podium and we're just, we're, we're just, just like, oh my gosh, she's healed herself. But then he started talking about getting a Mercedes to protect himself. Mm. And then I thought, well, if you're supposed to have so much power, your supernatural power, why would you need a car to protect yourself? But I brushed those thoughts out because I thought, you're not ha you don't have enough faith and how are you doubting father? Wow. And Leslie, what was it like being in the presence of Jim Jones? Um, I feared him in the fact that I saw the brutality and the sadistic behavior that he had. Um, so to me, he was not a loving person on all accounts. There was something very, very dark about him. Leslie, you know, you were only 22 when you escaped the Jonestown massacre. Tell us about that day and escaping. That morning, there was a, there was a, a feeling in the air of quietness, almost surreal. So we started down this, up this path, up this hill, and they could see us from the ground and I was waiting for the bullet to hit. I thought there's no way they're not gonna see us. All of us on that day were ready to die. Um, it was a it was a horrific day, but it was also freedom walk. It wasn't until the wee hours of the morning that we were told that 500 had ran into the jungle and 500 were dead. Uh, what lesson do you hope that we all learn from your story? The lessons I hope that will be learned is that we all are seeking a safe place. We all are seeking love. We're seeking hope. We're we're seeking a balance, and so we have to be very careful on who we listen to. And so when you find yourself in an organization and there are red flags or your spirit is saying, that's not right, listen to that. Because I call that your God sense. Someone called, some people call it the Holy Spirit. Some people call it intuition. But we are innately built to respond and receive messages that will allow us to move forward in a safe way. To our viewers out there, you can learn more about Leslie's harrowing story by picking up a copy of her book, Slavery of Faith. Find it on her website, lesliewagnerwilson.org. And again, Leslie, we appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your time and your experience. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back.